So, um, you know, different upgrades for the DX7, you know, the original Brownie. And up front, none of these upgrades offer multi-timbrality. None of them, not a single one. There's different variants in voice stacking, um, and that's about it. The rest is all MIDI enhancements. First one to get out the way is uh, something I'm personally not really a fan of. Disclaimer, if you love your SCR7 upgrade, I'm genuinely sorry, but it sucks. And that's my opinion. You have a much better opinion. There you go. Um, why? It's, it's kind of feature poor. It fixes some of the DX7 quirks, some of its MIDI quirks. It bumps up velocity, which is good. It lets you transmit... Uh, on MIDI channels, you know, 1 through 16, unlike the original, just channel 1, right? Uh, it gives it Omni mode, which is nice too. Uh, you can then filter specific uh, MIDI messages, your aftertouch, your wheels, whatever. You can filter that out if you want. Um, it then uh, MIDIfies your volume pedal, which is, which is neat. Um, and outside of that, my biggest gripe with it is no local off. No local off. You cannot turn local control. I don't know why they did that, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, what else does it give you? You can then store function, you know, kind of TX7 style. You can store function parameters per voice. Um, again, my problem with that is that when you dump a bank of 32 sounds to it, it kills your... You pretty much have to re-enter your mod wheel settings, your aftertouch settings, some other stuff for every freaking one of them for all 32, right? Um, like a one, two, three, you know, it's just really mad. Again, I don't know why they did that, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, it, it, of course, impairs uh, your, your ROM cartridge in the same way. So, you know, you put one in, you got 64 uh, sounds on it. None of them are going to have, uh, you know, uh, your aftertouch and your, and your wheel settings and none of that. So you're going to have to get a RAM cartridge. I guess the idea was that you get a RAM cartridge and then you kind of treat it like the internal memory. You dump a bank of 64 sounds in total. Then you end up, you know, storing those parameters for every freaking one of them. God, man, I'm tired of saying that. I can't, you know, envision somebody sitting there doing that. But you know what? If you like doing that, the power to you. 4X upgrade. Kind of a step up from the SCR7. I'm sorry, the SCR7. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, you know, step up from that because you do get local on off. Yeah, somebody, like, used their brain, right? Um, your memory bumps up to, well, 4X, you know, four banks instead of just one. Uh, you could do MIDI splits, layers, uh, and you've got a velocity bump. Doesn't that sound awesome? Welcome to E, gentlemen. This one is actually a worthy upgrade. E card, the gray matter E. It turns the DX7 from a MIDI imbecile into a MIDI genius. It can do amazing stuff. So think of all the stuff that SCR gives you, the SCR7. On top of that, you get local on off, right? I got that right. Uh, you're, you're, um, I mean, you can do amazing stuff. You can send, you know, one program change event to your effects processor, another to an external MIDI module, and then um, still control your DX7 and do splits and layers. Well, they're MIDI splits and layers because, again, it, it doesn't give it multi-timbral capabilities. Um, there's rudimentary internal voice stacking you can do, and there's random pitch detune. So, you know, that's, that's a whole other story, but that's just internal voice stacking. That's not multi-timbral voice stacking. That's monotimbral voice stacking. But, yeah, as far as its MIDI capabilities go, it becomes a genius. Um... And of course, your memory bumps up from you know 32 to what is it 320 uh, 
you know, 10 banks that you can overwrite that you can put your own stuff into, and then some extra banks, like eight or nine, I think, that you cannot overwrite. It's a beautiful friggin' upgrade. Um, I mean, they, the problem with these is, is obviously the more complex the upgrade, the flakier things get later on. Um, but if you can find a DX7 with a working e-card, it's a beautiful setup. I mean, there's this feature, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You know the the floating uh, the floating split points. So you're I, can't, I don't have it hooked up right now, but you can you can literally your split point can follow you around on the keyboard. I mean, yeah, man. Um, beautiful, beautiful upgrade. Super Max upgrade. Not quite as advanced as the e-card when it comes to MIDI stuff, but it does give you local on off. Uh, you can MIDI split, MIDI layer. Uh, transmit on all 16 minute channels, yada, yada, yada. Uh, various keyboard modes. Um, now, the one thing they didn't do, at least I couldn't find it in the manual or, or the menus, and this is pertaining to the original Supermax and the Supermax Plus, uh, there's no velocity bump, okay? So, SCR7 gives you velocity bump, um, because the original only have what topped out at 109, some topped out at 119, but it didn't give you that 0 127, right? So, um, again, uh, Supermax, out of all these upgrades, Supermax is the only one that doesn't give you that mini bump. What it does give you uh, is really cool, um, sort of internal voice circuitry based DSP. So you can do delays. You know, think of a delay line that uses your voices. So every tap is basically a voice. Tap, tap, tap. Everyone's going to eat up a voice. Um, then you've got voice stacking, mono timbral voice stacking. Again, so you, you can layer four voices, detune them. And I guess delays are, are kind of like the delayed version of the voice stacking. I think that explains it a little better. Um, but there's that. Um, and then there's patch morphing, which is beautiful. Pick any four patches morph through, uh, through them, either using a wheel or velocity or the keyboard rolling modes. There's various ways of doing that. A lot of confusion about it, but uh, when it works, it works, and it works beautifully, and it's really easy to control and set up. So that's Supermax. Unfortunately, mine is more of a uh, super sucks downgrade right now because it wouldn't run on the DX7 that I tried it with. Um, without crashing it. So whenever I do a memory recall of any one of the Supermax patches, uh, you know, nine out of 10, it would be fine. And then boom, it would just crash my DX7. Uh, I'm gonna try it with another DX. Hopefully it'll work. Um, but otherwise it's a smoking upgrade. I love it. And the most important feature of the Supermax upgrade is the fact that it turns your DX7 to the virus TI. So it comes with a kit, you drill holes, you put the knobs in and everything. No, I didn't. <laughs> but um, I forgot to mention that the Supermax, the original Supermax, gave you 256 memories, 8 banks. And the Supermax Plus gives you 16 banks. So, you know, 512 memories, overwritable memories. Um, now, rule of thumb with these upgrades, the less complex, the more reliable unfortunately so if you want your dx7 to be a little smarter than it is put in the scr7 rom never look back um you know for all you know stuff that i'm whining about is stuff you don't even care about so just you know do what you got to do uh 4x upgrade um again a very good upgrade it's like it's like scr7 on steroids that gives you extra memories and local off and midi splits and other stuff Supermax is probably the more complicated. It's like, you know, E and Supermax, they're just inherently more complex. And, of course, that comes with a lot of problems, reliability issues. Again, for every guy that, that swears by, you know, E cards and Supermax and whatever, there's a guy saying there's a tons of problem with them. So, um, exp you know, your mileage may vary, but the more complex they are, the more flaky things are going to get. So if you're a tinkerer like me, suffer through that shit. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe.